Coach, it's uh, the most exciting time of the year for high school baseball. You guys are getting ready for the sectional tournament. Your team, the two seed this year, a little bit different than what you've had in the past. But overall, uh, how would you kind of summarize the season? seems like your team played really well here toward the end and, and uh, has positioned itself well to make another run. Well, you know, we're really pleased with the way things have developed. Uh, we've, uh, uh, you know, we've had our moments both ways. We've played well at uh, times. We, um, you know, struggled at times, but we, I think we found out who we are and how we need to go about things. And uh, we've played well here. You know, we played seven games last week, which is certainly challenging from a pitching standpoint. And we were able to, uh, for the most part, do well in those games. And uh, we feel like, uh, you know, we're hopefully playing the best we can play at the right time of the year, which would be tournament time. Coach, your team still finishes the season with 20-plus wins, and it's a very young team as well. Just talk a little bit about the growth that you've seen from the uh, underclassmen that had to step up for your program this year. Well, you know, actually, we started three freshmen at times. You know, um, our shortstop, uh, Nyan uh, Dominguez, um, started out with our JVs and, uh, you know, really good defensively, quick, uh, had a feel for uh, the, the game. You know, he had some good baseball instincts, and he loves to play. At uh, first base, uh, Surf Guerrero, he's, uh, he's played there all year, and Surf, uh, one of our leading hitters, and, um, you know, really good defensively. He's handled uh, approaching 150 chances at first base without an error so far. I don't jinx him in that regard, but he, you know, he, he uh, he's been solid over there. And Lynn Sager, he too, as did Nyan, started out with our JV. He said he has progressed to where he's our DH and he catches um, some. He's uh, he's got arm strength. He can swing the bat well and. You know, all those kids uh, as freshmen have, have accorded themselves um, very well. And if you look around uh, our infield, we have, we have you know some other kids that are young. Uh, uh, Alex Dan- uh, Danner is only a sophomore. Uh, you know, in center field, we got Sam Hefner. He's a he's a junior. Um, behind the plate, along with uh, Liam Healy, we have um, Cole Smith, and they have complimented A.J. Spears, who is a senior, but has had some uh, injury issues here late in the season very well. Uh, second base, uh, Ty Vickers has done well, and he's starting to swing the bat a little bit for us, and he's played well defensively all year. And, uh, you know, Riley Morgan, um, and, and, and he, when I name names, I always seem to leave someone out. Brian Roberts, uh, Jet Gross, uh, not Brian, uh, you know, it, it just... Uh, we have some depth, and uh, we like the way the kids go about their business. And uh, I think getting Riley Morgan back in the middle of the year for us uh, from, uh, as a pitcher has been a plus. He's, he's been a um, he's, he's pitched well on the several games that he's had an opportunity to, to be on the mound. And um, of course, Cohen Rutherford's pitched well for us. Uh, Jed Gross has pitched well for us. Uh, uh, Cole. Um, Lewis has done well. You know, he, he's kind of been a back-end guy for us, but he's started on occasion. He throws a lot of strikes. He doesn't walk anybody, which is really conducive when you, you know, have a pitcher that's up in the pitch count and you're trying to protect the lead at the end of the game and uh, it's a close game. And if you don't give bases away, you, you know, if you if you get beat because the other team hits the ball, then that's so be it. That's the way it works out that day. But, uh, you know, it's a game of trying to eliminate giving away those free bases, whether it be via error or walk or hit by, hit pitch, uh, hit batters or, you know, things of that nature. And um, we've done a good job with that as the season has progressed. And uh, we'll see what happens. Coach, what do you, where do you think the team has grown the most from game one until now, especially with those young guys? Well, I just think the experience factor. You know, some of those kids have, have never played much varsity ball before. And, you know, they um, they go in, and I'm sure they, you know, they've played a lot of ball, but they start, and they feel a level of um, having to get relaxed and getting comfortable with what they're doing. And I think that's uh, what we've done. I think, uh, I think the, any, the key to any game is um, at any level, baseball wise, would be your, you know, your pitching and your defense, and I think we've done well with that. Uh, we struggled scoring runs at times, but uh, uh, we've get, getting better at that. Uh, you know, running bases is a factor. We've had our times when we haven't run the bases as well as we would like. 
you know, base running is kind of the special teams of baseball, and people, you can win a lot of games by base, uh, running base as well, and you can lose games by not being a good base running team. So, um, you know, all those things. You know, baseball is baseball. It's been the same for 100 years. It'll be the same as 100 years down the road. And we're just guys passing through it, team-wise, individual-wise, and trying to figure out how to play the game the way the game is supposed to be played so that you can maximize your opportunity to be successful. I think that's the key, you know, knowing when to take pitches, knowing when to punt, being able to punt, knowing what base to throw it to, uh, being able to hit behind runners, uh, realizing what the score of the game is, the speed of the base runner, you know, all of those factors, things that are just, uh, you know, mental things beyond the physical part of the game that you try to get guys to get a feel for. And uh, I think, uh, you know, our guys have, have done a good job with that. What's kind of the message going around in the locker room from you, your staff, and the upperclassmen preparing everybody else for what's to come uh, this week with the start of playoff baseball and just being in the right mindset for those situations and what is honestly bigger games, even though might not want that to be the feel? Well, every, you know, everybody's starting out zero and zero again, and we've... Uh, I think we've all, if you look around the panhandle, everybody's um, played well and, and, and had success. You know, the the idea again is to break the game down to its lowest common denominator, and that's the pitch, and just try to play it one pitch at a time, and and not uh, become result oriented, become process oriented. You know, just do the things that you know that you can do uh, to give you a chance to be successful. Yeah, baseball is a game of adversity. I mean, you're not going to get a hit every time. You're not going to. Uh, everything's not always going to work out the way you want it to work out, but how you can handle that, that's the key. And I like our tournament uh, set up because, you know, it used to be way back it was a single elimination. The team would have one pitcher, you could run him out there, and that would be the end of it for you. But now, you know, you get into the depth of your pitching staff, you play a series of games, that's double elimination, both at the sectional and regional level. And uh, I think that gives... Um, a, a chance for the, the strongest teams to prevail um, depth-wise. And uh, I've heard it said, and some might agree with this, I'll probably a lot will disagree with this, that the pitcher is the most important player of any sport in any game by what he brings to the game, even more so than a quarterback in football. You know, the quarterback in football, he's dependent upon his line and all the other guys around him. Of course, the pitcher is dependent upon his defense, too, uh, to a lot of points. But but his ability to locate pitches, his ability to um, keep the ball in the strike zone, and, um, you know, he the game starts with him. You know, if you think about it, uh, baseball's the only game – in which the defense controls the ball. So it's uh, you know, a lot of interesting factors to make the game what it is, and uh, that's the reason I enjoy it so much. But our kids this week, we just hope to be able to go out and enjoy the moment and play it one pitch at a time and see where it might take us. Coach, your team's in a little bit of a different scenario than it has been recently uh, with getting the two seed this year in your section opposed to the one. Uh, so playing that extra game, how does that, I guess, change things for your team, or does it change anything? Well, you know, if, if, if you look at it, if you're fortunate enough to be able to be successful the first day, and you would be fortunate enough to be successful the next day, you get a day off. And then the team that would come out of that then has to beat you two games in a row. Um, you know, when you were the one seed, you pretty much played – you know, you had a shorter period of time with your pitchers to get to the final game. So I don't know. It's um, it is what it is. I mean, you, you, you still have to you still have to play the game. The other team has to get you out twenty one times to beat you. You have to get them out twenty one times to beat them. So uh, Washington, you know, is, is 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 very good. I mean, they've uh, you can look at their uh, the scores of their games. They're a very competitive team. They're a young team like we are. So I think it's going to be an interesting series of games. Just like it's going to be in the other section, I think uh, you know Martinsburg certainly had an outstanding year. But uh, come tournament time, you know people get primed and they can hopefully get to match up with the pitching and so forth that they want. And as I just alluded to, the pitcher is such a significant part of the game, and um, you just never know what might happen in a in a, in a short series like that. 
Um, a guy could hit a ground ball, hit a pebble at a key time, go over somebody's head, and allow a couple runs to score. You know, I mean, just so uh, many, so many uh, variables that that are unpredictable. With that being said, kind of just staying on the theme of pitching in your guys' game tomorrow against Hampshire, have you decided who you all will be uh, starting out on the mound and who do you anticipate Hampshire to most likely be putting up against you guys? And if you've seen him or not, share kind of just that scouting report on Hampshire. Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I know in the past, come tournament time, Hampshire always seems to have someone that we haven't seen before. And, um, that is a good pitcher, so I'm sure that that'll probably be the case again tomorrow. Will will pitch. Uh, we're going to pitch Jet tomorrow. Gross. Um, he hit, had a good outing against Martinsburg. Uh, he's a left-hander. He's a sophomore, and um, you know we um, we like what he brings to the table. He likes to compete, and he um, he's left-handed. I think any time. Uh, and then you, of course, that we can back him up with. Uh, we have Riley and uh, Cohen and uh, Cole Lewis, like I said, a back end guy. And we also have Easton Pruitt, who pitched well the other day at Moorfield, and it's up um, uh, 20 plus innings for us over the course of the season. So, you know, with those five guys um, as as our, our nucleus, and, um, and, and, you know, we feel like we have a, t- a chance, you know. Um, so we'll see. That's where you're playing the games, I guess, right? It's interesting this time of year. All right, Coach, thank you for the time, and uh, good luck this week. And uh, maybe we'll see you in regionals. Okay, thank you. That was Coach John Lowry Sr., the Jefferson Cougars. Thank you to him for joining us here on the show today. And, Colin, it should be an interesting sectional tournament on both sides. Uh, Jefferson, Washington this year feels closer than it has been in the past. And, you know, maybe some people are changing their minds about which team you you would put number one based on the overall record. But obviously Washington's had, you know, a really good season as well. So I think it's a really competitive series there. Most likely that Jefferson takes care of business against Hampshire and Hampshire probably falls to Washington, whatever, if they were to play or Jefferson were to play them again, whatever, however it plays out. But, you know, we're kind of, Presuming that Hampshire's, unfortunately for them, going to fall. Uh, yeah, they're a, f- they're a little bit outmatched. Though. Though. Like. They're outmatched. They did compete the with Jefferson last play. time, though. They did. It was a 4-1 game, but still anticipate it being either Jefferson or Washington coming out on that end. And we'll kind of break down more of the matchups tomorrow when sectionals begin on both sides of things. But that wraps up this segment, which was brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer. Visit them at 360 Hack Wilson Way or online at orsinis.com.